charge after the heavy rains, the season which the Aborigines call Bengareng begins. The dry, fire-blackened plains are totally saturated with water until no more drops can be absorbed. Rivers and lakes burst their banks and cover the land with an almost continuous layer of water from one to three meters deep in which life is reborn. This is the other side of the Kakadu National Park, and these are the domains of the greatest killer in Australia. Now that it's all one big riverbank, nobody wants to be on the same side as him. This is the estuarine or saltwater crocodile, the largest reptile on the planet, a seven meter long titan which has to eat a lot to maintain its armored body. The Aborigines associate it with Ginga, a mythical lizard-shaped being that created the country out of rocks. In Kakadu, everyone has one eye on the surface of the water and the other on the sky. It is also a time of plenty for the huge osprey eagle. These are fisher eagles and they spend all the hours of the daylight watching from any hilltop or making reconnoitering flights from one hilltop to another. For the Aborigines, these are the incarnation of the Marawati, the ancestral creature that brought irises in its claws from the sea to the flooded plains. It is at this time of the year that the visitor can best appreciate why Kakadu has been declared part of the World Heritage by the UNESCO. However, this wild exuberance was not attractive to the original white colonists as a place to settle because of the continual floods. Thanks to this, it has remained intact until today and is considered as the real Australia, just as it once was. This is what it must seem like to these magpie geese. They arrive at the end of May from their breeding grounds in search of wild rice which grows quickly under their wet feet. Wet but flipperless, these strange anatidae have no webbed feet, so they can cling to the branches of the trees if necessary. A very useful skill in a place infested with crocodiles. Nevertheless, they have to come down sometimes. As the waters recede, these green pastures of fresh grass appear providing food for an army of specialized beaks. Each species tries to take advantage of this enormous stew by inserting the tool with which nature has blessed them. The sacred ibis inserts its curved beak with great care, probing the mud in search of small prey. The herons walk along trying to harpoon something, and the spoonbills swing their large spoon from one side to another. The concentration of insects, crustaceans and fish increases as the water in the ponds evaporates. Then, all styles are mixed in a festival of fishing methods. However, no bird should forget that the mud in Kakadu has teeth. Mm -hmm. 